Hi, Bob Grenier, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. I wanted to, do, to have a quick update on how things are going with respect to the lion re replications. Uh, Alan Smith is in progress with putting uh, his equipment and fixtures and fittings into his lab. And uh, Alan Goldwater in California has finished uh, a set of calibrations and he has done some tweaks to the positioning of various things uh, and got what he considers is a suitable uh, calibration. Uh, and I will share this uh, a link to this chart in the uh, description of this video. Uh, but you have uh, temp A uh, and temp B, uh, and these are thermocouples as I understand it in the back of the uh, looking for heat little robot, model T, uh, <clears throat> and they are uh, temp A and temp B here, this uh, line here, and you can see they're pretty, pretty tight now. Um, they were quite some distance off before uh, Alan um, learned more about the system and then there is the temp core A and temp core B and what this is is where Alan has placed a thermocouple inside the looking for heat tube uh, to measure the actual core temperature so you can see um, when when you're looking at um, the input power here uh, at sort of just over 150 watts uh, you've got a separation uh, of, where is that? That's 580 to 660 uh, separation between the core temperature and the um, uh, temperature as measured at the back of the uh, uh, device. So uh, Alan's actually intending to uh, have a sheathed thermocouple in the core with a piece of the sawn-off um, uh, bolt, uh, the kind of bolt which is uh, used in the Lion 1 and Lion 2 uh, is a zinc uh, coated bolt and that is so that the, effectively they're the same uh, but with the sheath thermocouple providing the core temperature so in the live data stream you'll have um, core temperature and sort of uh, control temperature it might be that we run the uh, temperature control off, off the core or um, uh, the the control temperature as in line one and line two, but this should give us very robust uh, data between uh, the control and uh, the uh, uh, actual live uh, so-called reactor uh, and their core temperatures uh, in the live data stream. So that's that's uh, where Alan is at, and uh, pending the. Um, uh, nothing going wrong. Uh, he intends to launch the replication uh, on the 28th of this month. That's the sort of rough plan as it stands at the moment. Uh, and thank you to uh, the donors that have helped support this work. Uh, Alan is also getting some extra components and, and the uh, rather more expensive uh, sheathed thermocouples uh, so that we can have very accurate data because we're not actually, uh, we don't actually have uh, a core supplied by Lion at this stage, and uh, as we understand it now, those may or may not come in in April. Uh, the Lion researcher wishes to conduct uh, some more tests, and and to aid with that, we're going to be sending him our EMF meter uh, that you saw in one of our previous videos, and uh, th this will give us an. Uh, an opportunity to cut our teeth. The diamonds uh, have been baked and soaked and are nearly ready uh, on the state side and I think in, in, in the UK and uh, they uh, there's enough there to do a number of runs uh, prior to uh, receiving potentially any uh, reactor from Lion himself. Uh, anyway, so your donations have helped uh, uh, put this together, and I just want to talk about something else that I've been up to today, so I'm going to shift camera position. It dawned on me today just how very, very important these samples that I have and have been carefully uh, taking the opportunity to look at um, over the uh, last sort of uh, nine months, and uh, I, I'm really going to start um, uh, take. I used a, a, some donations uh, today to 
uh, get some tools uh, that I th believe are necessary uh, for storing these samples because I think they they are extremely valuable as historical records. Uh, and so uh, we've got some various boxes with boxes in them and these little uh, screw top containers. There's, there's 30 in this container here and we'll, we'll be able to label those up. This uh, uh, little box sets here, they have seven uh, slots in them, which is the same number of slots that you have uh, on SEM uh, sort of table. Uh, so we'll be able to uh, prepare samples uh, before we go in there. I got a whole bunch of different tweezers and um, there was uh, uh, a need. I left my caliper in India, so uh, there's lots of times when I want to be measuring various things if anyone wants particular features measured. Um, I now have some calipers so I can do that. Uh, some conductive uh, uh, tweezers here, polymer tweezers. Uh, some a pen to apply this uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol to keep the tweezers all clean. Uh, and the reason I'm choosing polymer is because this is hy hydro hydrogen carbon and uh, we won't be getting the potential calcium uh, contamination that we might have seen from paper in the past. Um, and here, um, these are tools, and what, what I found when I put a, a whole bunch of Hutchison samples on the SEM table, and was very excited about looking at them, we then spent 45 minutes, which was very expensive, it was about $150 worth of time, uh, trying to vacuum the table down. Uh, but it was impossible, because a lot of the samples, uh, for instance, if you, if you look at this sample, uh, this Hutchison sample here, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, maybe not so clean and it might have some oil on the surface and uh, that wasn't the worst. Uh, but what, what it meant was that the vacuum couldn't get to a level at which you could turn on the electron beam. So uh, I've learned a lot. It does mean that, for instance, for some of the, the larger samples, uh, like uh, this part from the Lion 2 reactor, it, it may or may not go in. This is probably quite baked out, so it might be okay to go in. Um, but uh, there are the sample, for instance, the um, echo fuel sample two. I don't think that would work in there because it it might have some volatile uh, material in there that uh, prevents the the vacuum from getting low enough. So uh, I've got a set of uh, different tools here uh, because we want to be extracting some small samples, for instance, from the echo two fuel, from areas where we've identified a lot of these uh, spheres and other structures that we'll see in up and coming videos. Uh, and to be able to cleanly remove some of those, make a sample, prepare it uh, and uh, for analysis. So uh, thank you to all the people that have helped uh, fund this and the other apparatus and, and, and uh, thermocouples and so forth that will be part of the uh, Lion replication in California and uh, to help me go to the UK when it's ready for the replication uh, in the UK. Uh, this really will help uh, me to respect the uh, increasing understanding of value that there is in the samples that uh, were acquired uh, from Nova and Echo and um, E356 and um, uh, from Lion over the, the last year or so. So thank you very, very much.